जय राधा कुंज बिहार
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna, Krishna. Hare Hare. Goranga Ram Ram Hey Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare Krishna 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 Goranga Hey Hammer Hammer Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Krishna Hare Hare Hey Rama Rama Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Nice and loud Nittai Gorm Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Krishna Nittai Gorm Hey, Panchatadva, 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 Hey, Panchatadva, Panchatadva, Hey, Gorani Dham De Gorani Dham Babu Pad Babu Pad Babu Pad Jai Babu Pad Babu Pad Jai 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 Prabhu Pad Prabhu Pad Prabhu Pad Jai 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 So I have a message for you and a question. What do you want first, message or question? <laughs> question? Okay. Question first, then message. Uh, outside of the seventh canto, where you find Prahlad Maharaj is the main focus in that pastime, Prahlad Maharaj appears again in other places in the Srimad Bhagavatam and speaks. 
can you name two places outside of the seventh canto where Prahlad Maharaj speaks? <laughs> he speaks some verses. Ah, eighth canto, very good. When he appeared, very nice. He appeared when Bali Maharaj was tied up by the ropes of Vasuki under the guidance of Vamanadev. And at the end, he glorified Vamanadev nicely. And then Vamanadev told him, You also, along with Bali, can go to Sutala and live there, and enjoy material happiness, and I will be there with you. One more place that I can think of. That means where he actually spoke. Mm -hmm. In the Bhagavatam, yeah. Mr. A, he's, okay, you, you have made the Sangha complete. Now we have 10. Chen. Okay. So who knows what It's not so much a pastime, but he's speaking verses. Mm -hmm. Huh? Uh, which one? Fifth canto. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you are ex scholar of the Vedas. Thank you. Yeah, when he spoke, the uh, residents of Jambudweep offer prayers. And Pallad Maharaj speaks that verse and glorification of Nisringadev and other verses after that. Okay, okay. Now the message. Okay, it says, "This is just a a practical message, but it has value." It says, "If you're wondering whether to eat or don't eat, the mess, the scriptures say, don't eat, except in the month of December." <laughs> so that's the, that's the message. <laughs> yeah, that's the whole message. Gadadhar doesn't like that one. He's looking like you added too much onto the message. Are you still with me, Gadadhar? You're there somewhere. Okay, I I can see you, but I'm not sure you're there. <laughs> Okay. All right, so we can go on to Bhagavad Gita because I don't have any other topic for today. So if somebody can uh, fly the book over. <laughs> okay, Mr. Alex is pleased when I do Bhagavad Gita. Hmm? My, I'm not Hare Krishna. <laughs> I'm Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yeah, it's like saying Maharaj is Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Mahara, Hare, his name is Hare Krishna, he's the Maharaj. <laughs> or they say, Hare Ball. Hare Ball. Okay, so where are we? We're at we're at the chapter nineteen, right? <laughs> Somebody said there's seven hundred and forty five verses in the Bhagavad Gita. One scholar said forty five were left out, so I'm gonna do those forty five. <laughs> okay, so we're on chapter we're on number seventeen, right? Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Pitaham Masya Jagato. Mata data pitamaha 
Vedyam Pavitram Omkara Riksamayajar Evacha Pitaham Asya Jagatho Matadat Pitam Mamaha Vedyam Pavitram Omkara Riksamayajar Evacha Pitaham Asya Jagatho Matadata Pitamaha Vedyam Pavitram Unkara Riksamayajar Evacha Pita, Father, Aham, I, Asya, of this Jagata, universe, Mata, Mother, Data, Supporter, Pitamaha, Grandfather, Vedyam, what is to be known, Pavitram, that which purifies, Omkara, the syllable Om, Rik, the Rik Veda, Sama, the Sama Veda, Yaju, the Yajur Veda, Eva, certainly, Cha, and <clears throat> translation Krishna speaking, I am the father of this universe, the mother, the support, and the grandsire. I am the object of knowledge, the purifier, and the syllable Om. I am also the Rik, the Sama, and Yajur Vedas. Hmm. He doesn't say Atharva, does he? Interesting. The entire cosmic manifestation, moving and non-moving, are manifested by different activities of, the, of Krishna's energy. Hmm. Think about that one. The entire cosmic manifestations, moving and, mo and non-moving, are manifested by the different activities of Krishna's energy. In the material existence, we create different relationships with different living entities who are nothing but Krishna's marginal energy. <clears throat> Under the creation of Prakriti, some of them appear as our father, mother, grandfather, creator, etc., but actually they all are parts and parcels of Krishna. As such, these living entities who appear to be our father, mother, etc. are nothing but Krishna. In this verse, the word data means creator. Not only our father and mother parts and parcels of Krishna, but the creator, grandmother and grandfather, etc. are also Krishna. 
actually all living entity being part and parcel of Krishna is Krishna. Actually the Vedas therefore aim only towards Krishna. Whatever we want to know through the Vedas is but a progressive step to understanding Krishna. The subject matter which helps us purify our constitutional position is especially Krishna. Similarly, the living entity who is inquisitive to understand all Vedic principles is also part and parcel of Krishna and as such is also Krishna. In all the Vedic mantras, the worm Om, called Pranava, is a transcendental sound vibration and is also Krishna. And because in all the hymns of the four Vedas, Sama, Yajja, Rik, and Artharva, the Pranava or Omkara is very prominent, it is understood to be Krishna. Om Gyan Timirandasya Gena Jena Salakaya Chaksu Un Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gudavena Maha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prastaya Bhutale Sri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaudavani Pracharine Nirvishesa Sunyavari Pastyatya De Satarine Pancha kalpa taru bischa kripa sindhu pe bacha patitanam pavane bio vaishnave bio namaho namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Sivasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare hmm. So we understand from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings that the absolute truth is simultaneously one with and different simultaneously and that's the important part of that explanation. Something is same and different at the same time. So there are philosophers who emphasize the difference. There is philosophers who emphasize the same. There's philosophers who emphasize both equally and there are those who, um, in emphasizing the oneness, uh, forget about the difference. Here, the oneness is being very strongly emphasized. That actually everything is Krishna. <laughs> in one lecture, Srila Prabhupada stunned the entire audience by saying, You are Krishna, I am Krishna, we're all Krishna, everything is Krishna. And everyone who had heard Prabhupada before was thinking, well, he's, you know, the Mayavadis, the impersonalists, they speak about the, like that. Now Prabhupada is saying the same thing. But then Prabhupada qualified, yes, there is that understanding that because everything is coming from Krishna, it is non-different than Krishna. And at the same time, because it's not Krishna directly, it is different from Krishna. And an easy example that is being used all the time is the sun and the sunshine. Well, the sunshine is the energy of the sun, and sometimes we refer to the sunshine as being the sun. Oh, the sun has come in my room. But actually, the sun doesn't come in your room, because if it did, you wouldn't have a room left. <laughs> Neither would you be there. So, but the sunshine, which is actually the energy of the sun, permeates everywhere where the sun is in the localized position. So, but still, the sunshine is not separated from the sun. And therefore, we sometimes refer to the sunshine as being the sun. So using that analogy, which is probably the best analogy that we have in the material sense, that everything is coming from Krishna, and everything is invested with the energies of Krishna, and everything moves under the direction of Krishna. Therefore, everything in one sense is Krishna. You can't, re you can't redefine it in another way saying it's not Krishna, because how would you define it? All you can say is, the closest thing you can say, it's the energy of Krishna. But there are those who like to separate the energy from the, the energetic, and there's those who like to think that the energy and the energetic are the same. But then we understand that you can't, the remote cause and the uh, immediate cause 
are both uh, interlocked because without the remote cause, the, in, the immediate cause has no re relevancy. So behind everything is Krishna, and he makes everything happen. He makes everything move. And because everything is its ener his energies, and his energies are coming from him, he, his energies are not created energies, they're emanated energies from his own spiritual power. So he is the controller of those same energies. And we, and everything else, including the material energy itself, Bhumir Apanalobayu, Kamano Buddha Evacha, Ahankar Itiyame, Bina Prakriti Astadar. Earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence, and false ego, together make up my separated material energy. So he calls it my energy, Mama Maya. Mama, he says, Maya, Maya is also my energy. And Maya cannot do anything independent of Krishna. In fact, nobody can, well, one can act independent of the Lord, but there's another energy that works in such a way as to cause a reaction to that independent action which pushes it back to where it's supposed to be. In other words, if you just like, you're not supposed to commit crimes. But if you commit a crime, then you're punished. So the punishment really is the putting everything back in the perspective for a wrong action. So Krishna has a certain energy, which is called the Maya energy, that controls everything in the material world, but at the same time when someone acts independently of Krishna's will, that Maya energy causes that person some difficulty, which shows that that activity is wrong, <laughs> just by the reactions that one gets from that activity. Or even if they get, even if they act independently in a material sense and get a good reaction materially, still that good reaction, because it's material, also has a built-in form of suffering. So nothing is absolutely good in this world, but there is absolute suffering. <laughs> so that's the. Name. So no one can act independent of Krishna, and the more we accept his direction for activities, the more we stay under his protection and under his, what we say, uh, what's the word? We are happy in that connection. In other words, those who are tried to be independent from Krishna or reject Krishna's guidance or in some way don't acknowledge Krishna's complete control find themselves always unhappy or struggling like that. So devotees don't have to struggle because they take shelter of Krishna. They depend on Krishna. They know Krishna is the ultimate protector. He's the maintainer. He's the provider. He's the source of everything and he is the goal of all of activities. So devotees are happy. The struggle that devotees have is that getting to that point. <laughs> so because we are not on that point, we struggle. We're trying to get rid of our independent nature, which we may stop by our external activities, but our mind still remains independent in the way it wants to act. Although we force our mind to act according to what we should be acting, so in that force, that's the struggle. So that's how why devotees are struggling, because they're trying to do what is actually Krishna's will, but still their material nature, their material temperament is still pushing him in another direction. So as we continue to work towards Krishna consciousness, the strength of our material nature diminishes, and the strength of our spiritual nature increases. When we go away from that, we feed the other one. So whatever energy you, you place your attention on, that's where you actually gain, or you actually grow into that energy. So to make progress in Krishna consciousness means to practice it 24-7, <laughs> with no gaps. <laughs> Them. Sometimes we think, well, there's this, you know, there's free time, or there's my time. <laughs> but that means Maya time. <laughs> my time means Maya time. <laughs> 
So yeah, therefore then that's, that really aligns itself with the, this particular verse because ultimately uh, everything is within Krishna, everything is his energy, and we are also within Krishna and we are also his energy. And we can't, although we may act independently, in one sense we can't because when we do, as we say, we get curtailed or we suffer or something goes wrong. In other words, we create problems by, ending, by acting independently. So that, that problem is a form of punishment to get us back to where we're supposed to be. <laughs> but if we follow the instructions and learn what is Krishna's will for me, sometimes devotees ask, well, how do I know what Krishna wants from me? Well, it's easy. Krishna wants you to be Krishna conscious, that's all. <laughs> But then again, you have to think, well, how do I do that? Of course, then we have the process. And how to execute the process in the best possible way to get the maximum benefit from the execution of the process becomes the mindset of the devotee. And not uh, wasting time or acting in such a way that we go away from Krishna. <laughs> and we all have our natures. Uh, no, no devotees exactly see things in the same way. No devotees actually become Krishna conscious in the same way. There's an old saying, be yourself, but be Krishna conscious. Well, what is yourself? You have, a you have a quality and you have characteristics. You have, you have your Swadharma and then you have your Sanatana Dharma. Your Swadharma is your material nature. And then, of course, if you divide it up into Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, and Sudra, then you understand a little bit about your material nature. But in this age, Kalo, Sudra, Sambhavan. So everyone has to work to somehow or other bring their nature in line with their actual nature. Because some of us are Vaishyas, some of us are Brahmins, some of us are Kshatriyas, like that. And so, therefore, this is when we use that material nature in Krishna's service, then it becomes purified, and gradually that nature actually starts to disappear, and we actually attain to our spiritual nature, like that. But if we don't uh, understand what is our material nature, then we need guidance. As Prabhupada writes in the first canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, it's the duty of the spiritual master to observe the disciples and engage them in devotional service according to their nature. Hmm. So in the first canto he was already talking about principles of anashram, like that. So sometimes we find we have to do the needful. And the needful means whatever the, the temple uh, activities are, and sometimes we find that, that it's against our nature or it's different than our nature. And that was very prominent in the beginning days of Krishna consciousness when Prabhupada was simply trying to fill in whatever was necessary for spreading Krishna consciousness and devotees had to do services that were very difficult and sometimes against their nature. But because Prabhupada was there, it was, it was easier for them to surrender to that. And because Prabhupada inspired that type of surrender, by explaining this is important because this is what we need to serve Krishna. Mm. But then as time went on, as Prabhupada said, we have to establish this Daivivan Ashram to know what is your nature and engage that nature in the best possible way. Since we now have an infrastructure within our society where we have temples, we have activities, we have resources, we have everything now, Devotees can be trained and engaged according to their nature, like that. And uh, you start to understand, because when you start doing those things that are according to your nature, your Krishna consciousness becomes strong. You start to feel happy, and you also become creative. Creative in a sense, when you work according to your nature, you start thinking about how to increase that service by creative thinking. If you're not thinking how to increase the service that you're in, that means you're not working towards your nature so much. Or you're not inspired in devotional service. 
And on the highest platform, you can transcend all nature and do any service. But that's the highest platform, and then one can be satisfied with that. So therefore, the process is, uh, as Srila Prabhupada said, in 1977, they were talking, and Prabhupada was discussing this. You know, one, I think it was Hari Sari, said, Well, just chanting Hare Krishna, isn't that enough? Prabhupada said, If it was enough, why are so many devotees falling down? Why are they going away? Because they're not engaged in the proper way. Or they're not able to surrender to whatever engagements they're given like that. But our society will grow exponentially or fast when everyone is working at least close to their nature. Yeah. There's one very, I won't mention his name, but he reveals his nature. He's a very leading preacher in our movement. He's an author, writes many books. He's a powerful preacher, but he, he always says, my, my varna is, is Vaishya, I'm a Vaishya. He says, I'm always thinking of money. <laughs> but he's always thinking how to get money for Krishna. Not like he's always thinking about how to get money for himself. Himself, he doesn't change at all. His, his, his material posture stays the same, but he's a, he, he mentions that. So we don't know our nature, but we get a little indications through our different activities in devotional service. What is our particular nature? But the more you work at it, and the more you also train, because uh, there is a training program to help awaken your nature. And Prabhupada also explained that. It was called Van Ashram College. But sometimes we find ourselves just doing the needful. <laughs> Whatever service or need is, we do it. And that's nice if you can work that way and be creative and enthusiastic in that. But if you just drag through your service, you're just doing it because that's what you got to do. And that means you're really not working to your nature. Or you don't see the relationship between the activity and Krishna. Either one. Like that. So, uh, yeah. But everything ultimately is Krishna. <laughs> In the absolute sense of the term. So, yeah, so Krishna continues for two more verses making this point because it's very important to understand this point. That's why this chapter, the most confidential knowledge, chapter 9 in Bhagavad Gita, is considered the most uh, spiritually advanced chapter. Out of all the, the chapters, chapter 9 is considered to be the most, uh, he gives the most confidential knowledge. That's his title here in this chapter here. So he's making this confidential knowledge available. Now how many people can accept what Krishna says in these verses, that he's ultimately everything? Very few. <laughs> and only those who can realize it can fully accept it. Those of us who can't realize it, we may accept it theoretically. But we forget and we make distinctions. So when you know that everything is Krishna and his energy is also Krishna, then what is, what is the uh, result? We become humble. <laughs> we become humble. Then. And then in that humility, we see everything in a sacred way. Everything is sacred because everything is Krishna. <laughs> like that. Like I was just reading, I was going through some of my old files looking through my files on Christianity and I found this interview with Mother Teresa. Really powerful. And what she was saying is that when she serves the poor, she serves Jesus. She doesn't see any distinction between the poor people she serves and Jesus. She says, the poor people represent to me an opportunity for me to serve Jesus. So when I'm serving the poor people, I'm serving Jesus directly. I mean, that's spiritual vision. <laughs> that's spiritual vision. So when we're, whatever we're doing, we're actually 
connecting with Krishna because everything is Krishna and ultimately in that sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I don't know if there's any questions, but maybe we'll get lucky. <laughs> okay, any comments or questions? Because it's nice if we can get a little discussion going about these points that are being made here because they are quite, uh, what we say, hard to understand. Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, to discover our Varna, should we orient according to our interest and inspirations? or That may not necessarily be. It has, it has some I indication and that question has been raised before. But your interest also may be just due to your, uh, your uh, conditioning in the material world. That's all. Your swadharma is also a conditioning, but your social conditioning and your upbringing and your environment and your education may also provide a type of extension of that natural condition into something that is material but not necessarily your nature. But there is a little indication in that. Mm -hmm. There is some indication that if you like to do something that may be part of that your Swadharma nature. Or if you're enthusiastic to do something like that. There's, uh, there's people who love to manage. There's people who love to preach. There's people who love to cook. There's people who love to do book distribution. So, mm, a lot of times that is an indication of their nature. <laughs> but not always. That's why Prabhupada train, said training is, is necessary to bring it out, uh, you know, completely. Uh, sometimes we may find uh, our Varna to Jyotish and I'm thinking uh, should we m concentrate more on things what we love to do even if there's not the characteristics of our Varna and uh, well we should try to work on the authorities and the authorities should also be insightful to see how best to engage the devotees we have to see when, as a th uh, gurus, temple presidents, people who are in charge, see the people that are working underneath them, they have to see, are they really inspired in their service? Are they growing in their service? Are they becoming Krishna conscious or not? So it's up to the temple authorities, the spiritual authorities, to be observant to those that, that are working under them and see if there is some need to change services in order to inspire that person for advancement like that. But again, on the highest level, then one can do any service and be fully inspired. That means when they're above the modes of material nature. Yeah, we have examples of that. If you're not enthusiastic in your service, then something's wrong. Yeah. Okay. Hare Krishna. You mentioned that um, in one in one side you mentioned that everyone has some nature. One, someone like to cook. Someone like to distribute books and something. But that side there is a statement that everyone is children in this in this age, Kali Yuga. So how this can we reconcile this apparent well, contradiction? Well, that's that's the stage. That's the next step in our Krishna conscious society is to create training programs. 
And Prabhupada brings that out in lectures that the Brahmins are meant to train everyone else. The collective Brahmin society should know all the services within the society. Not that every Brahmin not that every Brahmin knows all services, but collectively. And through that they can train people in whatever services are needed. They can train in cooking, they can train in book distribution, they can train in cleaning the temple. So Brahmins are meant to be the teachers and then uh, they'll train others to become either Brahmins or uh, doing Brahminical services, doing Kshatriya services, just to manage the temple is Kshatriya service. To, to uh, be an accountant, that's a Vaishya service. Cooking is more Brahminical service. Uh, preaching is Brahminical service, generally. So services fall into different categories like that. Um, protecting the devotees and making sure the devotees are cared for, that's Kshatriya duties, like that. So each of the Varnas have a particular characteristic of service that they, are, they align themselves with, like that. There are devotees who can make money really fast, and there's devotees who can't make anything. It means it's just they're not their nature. So that Swadharma will be transformed into, you know, Sanatan Dharma when one becomes fully engaged in devotional service according to their nature. And then one can start to recognize their spiritual identity also through that. Then in the higher stages, when they get to the stages of ruchi and the shakti, and they start engaging in spontaneous devotional service, then they get indications through the spiritual master and through their own service, what is their relationship with Krishna in the spiritual world. And then it becomes confirmed by the spiritual master at a certain level of practice. So, so just if I understood co uh, correctly, so everyone is a shudra. Then, according to what I perceive, training is that they they are not trained. Yeah, every, that's why Prabhupada said we must establish these vanashram colleges. These are all meant to, for for training. We're not doing it, uh, and therefore we find you know devotees are not. We can't keep devotees. <coughs> revolving door policy. You go, I go to a temple and there's a whole set of devotees. I come back a year later, there's a whole new set. <laughs> We're good at bringing people in, but to keep them in. That's what it takes, these training programs. And probably there are many levels of training according to um, Seven Cantor. Um, there are <coughs> um, what are these uh, for the human beings that is trained in certain qualities as Sri Ramahash in that Varna, Varna uh, book he's explaining that first we have to train people in, uh, in uh, being human being. Right, right. At 28? Uh, 30. 30, 30, 30 um, qualities. Quality. Yeah, 30 qualities of human being. It's in the this is for case. all Varnas, right? Yeah, hmm. that's for everyone. So this is one level of uh, training, and then That's is the basis of the training, foundation, and then is for the each one is different training. Mm, that yeah, as one grows in the training, then there are certain qualities and characteristics become become apparent, and then it's up to the uh, leaders to note that and direct that in a certain direction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. There's the there's devotees who just just like to do personal serv service for everyone. Like Mr. Alex, he likes to do all kinds of personal service for everyone. So that's a certain characteristic and quality. And there's people who, um, you know, are more. You know, they like to serve others. 
but not in a personal way, more in a, you know, like in the preaching way, or in creating uh, programs like that. So these characteristics and qualities come out like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I just love when I hear Krishna killing the demons, I get so excited. So my Kshatriya, <laughs> na my Kshatriya nature comes out. I think, you know, it's when I read the Ramayana, I find myself, you know, <laughs> getting, uh, getting absorbed. <laughs> Mahabharat, Ramayan, and I, we were always on the winning side too, so it's not a problem. Detail, <laughs> important detail. Thank you. So you can see your nature sometimes, and how how it manifests, and the way you're attracted to certain things and not attracted to other things. Mm -hmm. But it's mixed, right? There is no pure varna in this age. It's all mixed. Yes. Well, it can become more and more, more purified. Yeah. But Krishna says, Chaturvana mayasrista guna karma vibhaga saha. Yeah, I've created this system of you know, the varnas and the ashrams. So, you know, everyone has their swadharma. But in this age, because age is so bad, it's it's covered, and therefore everyone has it requires training. But usually, when people were born, they were born in a particular family, and in that va family, they had that varna nature, and then they followed that varna, and they grew into that. But here in Western society, there's no such training, and there's no such family that is like that. Sometimes you see people who are born in military families, they also become Millie. Mm -hmm. They become that mood also. Those who like to protect others, that's the Kshatriya nature. They are protectors. They become very angry when, pe when other people exploit other people and take advantage of them. It's like when cows are killed, or women are abused, or children are abused. The Kshatriyas, they become very angry. That's their nature. Okay, this is a little bit, because it touches on where our movement and needs to go yet. Still, we're working on this. <clears throat> did you like cooking today? Yeah. Or did you just do it because we had to do it? <laughs> okay, so that's not maybe not your nature. Then. <laughs> but, you know, that's how the movement went on in the beginning. People said, Prabhupada said, just surrender and Krishna will empower you. And devotees also did that. So Prabhupada was giving a kind of vanashram training by forcing people into services. Because <laughs> 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 the services were needed. <laughs> Prabhupada gave many personal instructions to his friends who were always, and then he was just nervous, what is he going to say to him, what, what she, he should do. And then he finally went to Prabhupada, and when he, came, when he got in, Prabhupada just looked at him and said, okay, so what are you going to do for Krishna? He asked him. Yeah. He asked him, what yeah. he, and then he said, I would like to do Mridangas Prabhupada, and has, this is going to be your... This is going to be your service for Krishna. Okay. So he made Mridangas from that on. Because Prabhupada, he knew, Prabhupada knew if he told him what to do, he wouldn't like it. <laughs> so Prabhupada wanted to avoid that, so he just... <laughs> yeah. Okay, so... Then there's another aspect to this. Where do women fit in? <laughs> 
And Prabhupada also said the women usually take on the the nature of the man that they're serving. So usually, and of course, so women also are, have a certain nature too. But um, Prabhupada said, if a woman marries a Brahmin, then she, she, uh, you know, she becomes like a Brahmin. She marries a Shastra, she becomes, she adopts this, the, the nature of her husband like that. But then again, in this society, the, because the husbands don't know their nature, the women don't either. <laughs> so. But women also have certain characteristics that are indicating of the different varnas also. And you can see that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll stop here since Gornitai is sleeping. Almost. <laughs> Eating. Okay. It's the month of December. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Srimad Bhagavad Gita Kijai.